Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my favorites of December as well as a couple misses. I have quite a lot of products and it's a mixture of things. I tried a ton of new stuff over the holidays and just this month in general there's been a ton of PR and I found some stuff that I really enjoyed and it's not all makeup. We have like a mixture of a lot of things. So if you are new here I would love for you to subscribe and stay a while and let's begin. Now my first favorite of the month is something that I've mentioned on my channel and I literally use this brand only. I did partner with Native Deodorant for this video, so thank you for sponsoring this video. This is literally the best deodorant. This is a natural deodorant, so it's aluminum-free, paraben-free, cruelty-free, made in the USA. It's just better for you. If you weren't aware, most deodorants have aluminum in them. You're slathering that all over and it's absorbing into your skin and it's really not good for you. So I started to look into some more natural alternatives a while back and I found Native and I have not used another brand since. Now I did like the peach and apricot which was one of their summer scents but I have two new favorites from the winter scents. So the two new scents that I'm obsessed with is mistletoe which smells like Christmas trees. It just smells so good. And then also I'm wearing lemon cake today, which obviously smells amazing. They have like a peppermint. They have all different scents. They have unscented if you're someone that doesn't enjoy scents. So you can kind of pick and choose depending on your taste. Now when I mentioned them last time, a lot of you guys picked them up and I get so many Snapchats of you guys like, I love it. This is my favorite scent. Is there any new scents? Do you have a new code? So I do have a code for 10% off. I will put it on the screen if you're interested and I will link them down below and you can kind of check their website. You can buy like three packs or you can buy all different kind of very variations and there's so many different scents. They have like their permanent scents and then they have seasonal scents they roll through which I love the most. So I will link them down below and without further ado let's get into some more favorites. My next favorite is something that I was sent in a beauty box. This is the Bioderma Sensi Sensibio H2O Micellar Water. This is so good you guys. I have been using it ever since I got it and I just wet a cotton round and it takes my makeup off quicker than any other micellar water. It's just very, um, I don't want to say wet because it's a water, but it just removes your makeup quicker than other ones. I don't have to tug or rub uh, and it doesn't leave me greasy. It doesn't leave me oily. So really, really love this. I would say this has taken the cake in terms of my favorite, even though I do have quite a few that I enjoy. This is like my top pick. My next favorite is an oldie, but a goodie. I haven't used this for years. This is probably the first foundation that I ever wore and I remember going clubbing when I was like 18. Those were the days and I would wear this and it would last all night through my shenanigans. We will not talk about those. And then when I became a YouTuber, I just started seeing all these different brands and I forgot about it. So I actually purchased a new one because I wanted to get like a fresh bottle and this is the Studio Fix foundation from MAC and I got NW25. It's a little bit more cool toned or neutral toned. It's not so yellow. That's one thing I don't like about some of the NC colors is they are so, so yellow. Um, it's just kind of hard to match. So I get this and I can mix it in with some yellow foundations I have to kind of offset. But I really enjoy this. I'm wearing it now. I've been wearing it for the past week or so. And I remember why I liked it so much. And I feel like a lot of people have kind of given it a bad name and said like, oh, it's so heavy. It's so mask-like. And I don't really find that, especially if you use a damp sponge. I don't find that at all, but it does last. So it's very comparable to the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I wouldn't say it's as long lasting as that, but it's very comparable in the way that it looks on the skin in my opinion. So I used to love it and I'm falling in love with it again. It's not too badly priced. You do get an ounce. The only thing is you don't get a pump, which is really annoying, but really enjoying it. If you haven't used this before and you like like a medium to full coverage and a long lasting foundation that is matte, I would try this. Next up, I have a drugstore affordable beauty sponge that I'm really loving lately, and this is the new LA Girl sponge. So they did send me a couple of these, and I immediately tried them out. This is what the sponge looks like. So it is pretty big, I would say bigger than a beauty blender, and then it has this flat edge right here, which is what I used the most. And it really does expand when you get it damp. Um, when I first got it, it was pretty small, but it did expand really nicely. It's very nice and soft. I would say very comparable to maybe like the Real Techniques sponge. But I used it for my foundation, my concealer, and then I used a powder and I just stamped it into the skin. And I'm really, really enjoying it. And I'm not like in love with the Real Techniques one. I think it's okay, but I really enjoy the Eco Tools one a lot. Um, I like the Fenty Beauty one. And then I like this one now as well. But this is probably the most affordable one. So just wanted to mention it in case you're on the hunt 
for an affordable um, kind of beauty blender dupe. This is a good one to look at. Next up is a brush that I bought. Um, I bought a few brushes from the new Smashbox brush collection. I haven't gotten PR from Smashbox in a while, so uh, I didn't really know what to think when they came out with brushes. And then when I've seen people talk about their favorites, I went on the website. I will say they are very pricey. I think they're like really pricey and I really like a couple of them that I purchased but it's a hefty price tag. This one in particular though, I'm really enjoying, and this is the Precise Highlighting Brush. This is what it looks like. It is just kind of unique. It just fits perfectly on the tops of your cheekbones, down the center of your nose, and it's my new favorite highlighting brush. Very, very expensive, but I am enjoying it, so I would recommend it. If you feel like you have a hard time getting your highlight in the right areas, this is gonna be like really precise, but still blended out. Next, I want to talk about a perfume that I've been enjoying, and this is the new KKW fragrance. Now, when they initially launched, I was really not interested. I was like, oh, I didn't really know what Gardenia smelled like. Like, I didn't, I couldn't picture it, and I was like, that just smells like, or it sounds like kind of like a garden, so I'm like, I don't know. What sold me was a video I saw online where they covered up the brand of the perfume, took them out on the streets of New York, I believe, and just had random people smelling them. And pretty much everyone said, ooh, that smells nice. It smells nice and light and fresh and sweet. And so I was like, okay, people are really liking the scent. Do I think it's like a revolutionary scent that you can't get from any other perfume? No, but I do enjoy it. Doesn't give me a headache. It's very nice and fresh. I spray a few spritzes on and I can smell it throughout the day. A lot of times with perfumes that are heavier scented, I will get a headache and I don't find that with this. So I am enjoying it. I did get the small size because I didn't know if I was gonna like it. And I don't really know if I would like the other scents, so I think I'm just gonna stick with this. But if you've tried any of them, let me know down below your thoughts on her perfumes. Now my next favorite is something that when I first tried it, I thought like, oh, okay, it's kind of nice and I wasn't really overly impressed, but then the more I use it, the more I enjoy it. And this is the Patrick's Powder MAC um, Patrick Star Collection. This is their powder, the loose setting powder. Now, I don't love this so much for baking. Uh, I feel like it kind of settled a little bit when I actually like baked and let it sit for five to 10 minutes, but I do like it for setting the entire face, including the under eyes. So I do take a damp sponge and just kind of press it into the skin all over the face, and I don't let the powder kind of collect up which is kind of easy because it is very finely milled, but I feel like it just sets the face very nicely, matte, smooth, everything I'm looking for. So I did use it today, I've been using it quite a lot lately, and it's growing on me. Like the first time I was like, oh, I don't get it. But when I used it to set my entire face, it really like kind of stole my heart. So it is a really nice powder. I'm hearing a lot of good things about it, but it's one of those powders that the more I use it, the more I enjoy it. Next up, I have an eyebrow product that is all I use now, and this is the Iconic London Brow Cushion. So I have the shade Medium, and I don't use any other brow product now. Now, I do use my own brush, which is a Zoeva winged liner brush. I just think it works best, but this stays on all day, and I find I have more control than with sometimes like a um, gel or a brow pomade. It can get very chunky, um, especially on areas where I do have hair in comparison to the areas where I don't and I'm kind of drawing it in. This is very pigmented, but it is thin, so I can kind of like mesh it in with the areas that I do have a lot of hair and where I don't. I just think it lasts all day. It gives me more control. I can do more natural hair-like strokes, and I do like it. Now, I have tried the Model Zone, and I don't like it as much. It's not as pigmented. This one's a lot more um, wet, so there's a lot more product in there, I would say, and I just prefer this. The Model Zone felt like it was not as pigmented, a little bit more sheer, so when I would draw the line, there would be like skips in it, and I don't like that. This is just like, I draw the line to outline, and then I fill in, and I'm done. So absolutely in love with this new brow product. I have not touched any other brow products since I got this. Next, I have a bronzer that I recently was sent from MAC and it's like perfect for me. And this is the Satin Shimmer Bronzer from the Jade Jagger Collection. So you have like a matte mineralized bronzer on this side and then you have like a shimmer on this side. It is just like the perfect natural bronzer. I admittedly don't like super dark like bam bronzers and this gives me the most beautiful warmth to the skin and I can build it up. I'm wearing it today pretty lightly but it's one of those ones where you wanna build it up. So I would say if you're deeper than medium, this is gonna to be too light for you, but I'm really enjoying it. 
and they actually did release like half bronzer half blushes and I kind of want to pick them up the packaging is super cool but really the product is just a beautiful um, it just looks like your sun kissed and that's what I'm looking for I like a little bit of shimmer in my bronzers to really make me look healthy and alive my last favorite of the month is actually the lipstick that I'm wearing right now, and this is from Beaut Beauté. This is a new brand, and I actually worked with them, and this is the shade Bad Habit, and I actually didn't think I was going to like this because it is like kind of like that mauve brown neutral lip, and usually I don't like deep colors, but uh, when I was putting them on to do a video, this is actually my favorite. I was like, wow, like... I just felt like it was so flattering and usually I really like I would look at this in the tube and be like oh it's too dark for me and I would go for the more nude one but I actually enjoyed this over the two lighter nudes the formula on this is crazy pigmented I'm actually gonna show you it's like a little you know doe foot applicator and then just look like it is crazy pigmented I'm trying to like compare it to another lipstick and it's kind of hard because it's liquidy but it's also got a little bit of a moussey touch it's just very comfortable, full pigment. Now they do have four shades right now, but hopefully they expand. So I'll link them down below. They're a small company, but I want to support them and show them um, some love because I think the formula, I mean, truly when I applied it, I was like, whoa, pigment, whoa, smells good, whoa, dries down, very comfortable. Uh, I do have a little bit of a gloss on mine right now just because I wanted to, I tried to add like a glitter topper and then I didn't like it, so I wiped it away, but very comfortable, very pretty, very beautiful colors. Um, and I think pretty affordable. I want to say like 18 bucks, and then I do have a code. If it's still um, available, I will link it down below. Now I do have two disappointments I want to talk to you guys for this month. This isn't like a new product, but I've been trying to use it more, and I just don't like it at all. And this is the Way Hair Care uh, Dry Shampoo Foam. I just can't get it to work. Um, when I put it in my roots, I just feel like I have a sticky, clumpy mess. It doesn't soak up any oils for me. Does it give me volume? I mean, I would say so, but it's so sticky that I can't even like work with it. It's not manageable. I just think it's kind of like overhyped or it's kind of niche gimmicky like, oh, that's such a cool idea, but it's really not practical. I really just prefer like my regular dry shampoos that have that powdery base that are going to really soak up the oils. So this is like a pass for me and I really wish I would have returned it because I think it was like 30 some dollars and I don't ever use it. And my last disappointing product is this new Master Chrome highlighter in the shade 50. This, I thought I was going to love it because it's like a white pink shift. It is so chunky. I don't know if you can see that. It's just weird. I don't know. Like when you try to pick it up on your brush, there you go. You get like these big chunks and they kind of chunk all over the skin and I just don't love it. I'm typically not very fussy. Like usually if it blends out, it blends out, but I don't really find that it blends out. It's almost like it doesn't stick except for like these big chunks on your face. So I really love their gold one and I know that they released this in another shade, but this one was just kind of a disappointment to me and I just thought the formula is just, it's like too crumbly and chunky and it's just not the same formula as their other highlighter. All right guys, so that concludes my favorites and fails for December. Make sure to check out Native Deodorant down below. I'll have them as the first link in the description box. Let me know what you've been loving and not loving for this month. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.